Dr. Ariane from the Movement Paradigm. You know sugar is not the best for you, but do you know how it's impacting your pain and inflammation in your muscles and your joints? Sugar is in fact at the top of the list that is one of the biggest contributors to pain. Numerous studies at this point continue to prove that sugar promotes pro-inflammatory markers, which contributes to further inflammation. So why is that important? Because low level and systemic inflammation that is chronic is what contributes to many of the health conditions that we are presented with. In fact, 90% of all chronic disease is associated with inflammation. So now let's talk about five different ways that consuming added sugars in your diet contributes to inflammation and therefore pain. Number one is it stimulates free fatty acids in the liver. And when these free fatty acids are digested by the body, then this can also contribute to compounds being released, which contribute to pro-inflammatory markers. Number two is AGEs. This is referred to as advanced glycolytic end products. So when sugar combines with a protein or fat in the bloodstream, this contributes to oxidation or inflammation in the body. Number three is leaky gut. So increased sugar intake can contribute to leaky gut, which is also referred to as intestinal permeability. So when this happens, we have these tight junctions in our gut that we're, are supposed to be a protective barrier to not let toxins and pathogens move through into our bloodstream. However, when we begin to have leaky gut, these toxins and pathogens are able to move through because the tight junctions are not so tight anymore. So that can even contribute to inflammation, of course, because now you have an immune response to all of these foreign invaders that are coming into the bloodstream. But then it can also even contribute to things like leaky brain, which is where these, again, pathogens, toxins, foreign invaders cross the blood-brain barrier and can contribute to things like brain fog, loss of clarity, memory, etc. Number four is increased LDL. And when we have increased LDL from overconsumption of sugar, then that is increasing inflammatory markers, specifically C-reactive protein. Number five, last but not least, is weight gain. So of course, increased sugar consumption can absolutely lead to weight gain, which thereby increases your insulin resistance as well as inflammation. And then that can throw on a whole cascade of other symptoms as well, especially from a hormonal standpoint. Just to put that into some context, so in one study that was performed, the participants who drank 40 grams of added sugar a day, which is essentially one soda, increased their insulin resistance, their inflammation, and their LDL markers. So another fun fact, so consuming 50 grams of fructose within 30 minutes can increase your C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker. And yet another, 50 grams of refined carbohydrates in the form of white bread can increase your pro-inflammatory markers, NF, kappa B, and increase blood sugar. So now you have a little bit of a better understanding about how sugar impacts your body, specifically inflammation and therefore pain. If we are in a chronic inflammatory stage, we are going to have typically increased pain levels. So your first step in evaluating sugar is, is really just track it. See how many grams a day you are consuming. There is a difference between natural sugars and added and refined sugars. However, you don't need to eat six fruits a day, for example, but you know, two to three, depending on your age, activity, height, etc., would be appropriate. But as it relates to added sugars, we really want to have less than 20 grams of sugar. And that means you have to think about what, how many grams of sugar is in your creamer? How many grams of sugar is in your salad dressing? How many grams of sugar is in your you know, tomato sauce? Because there's not just tomatoes and the natural sugar from that, but there's also high fructose corn syrup in most of those. So you really want to evaluate how many grams a day you're actually getting and then begin to slowly work it down. You don't need to do it overnight because it is important to recognize that if you are consuming a lot of sugar, you can have a significant die-off reaction as you begin to eliminate those sugars from your diet. So just begin to slowly work them out of your diet to a natural whole food plan, which is always the goal. If this was helpful, make sure to give it a like, 
share it with a friend or family member who might need this. And please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Movement Paradigm, for weekly tips on mindset, nutrition, and movement. And thank you as always for your support. I look forward to seeing you next week.